Hi, I'm Tommy. And I'm Jamie, and welcome to TJ37, the Muscles Daily Show. Today, we're going to be talking to you about the lack of knowledge that physical education teachers have on the lower leg. <laughs> to do this, we have hired two interviewers to walk around Appleby College and interview the physical education teachers and find out how little they really know about the lower leg. Take, Take a, a look. look. What major bones make up the lower leg? Femur. Uh, femur. Uh, the femur. Uh, the major bones of the lower leg are the fibula and the tibia. The fibula is located on the exterior of the lower leg, and the tibia is located on the interior. The major bones of the ankle are the tarsals and metatarsals. The lower leg has two major joints, the knee joint and the ankle joint. The knee joint is a synovial hinge joint, and the ankle joint is a synovial modified hinge joint. What are two muscles that make up the lower leg? The bicep femoris. The lower leg. Uh, your quadriceps, your hamstrings, your... Uh, the rectus femoris. The two muscles that make up the posterior view of the lower leg are the soleus and the gastrocnemius muscles. The major muscle of the anterior view of the lower leg is the tibialis anterior muscle. What joint is responsible for flexion and extension of the lower leg? The knee. Uh, your knee joint. The joint that is responsible for flexion and extension of the lower leg is the knee joint. Like I said previously, the knee joint is a synovial hinge joint. What joint is responsible for plantar and dorsiflexion? Uh, your ankle. The ankle joint? The ankle joint is responsible for plantar and dorsiflexion of the lower leg. As stated before, the ankle joint is a modified hinge joint. True or false, the knee joint moves in the transverse plane. False? True. Uh, true. Uh, the correct answer is false. The knee joint actually moves in the sagittal plane along the horizontal axes. Similarly, the ankle joint also moves in the sagittal plane and along the horizontal axes. What is an isometric <laughs> movement? Uh, isometric? Pass. Bench press. <laughs> uh, uh, it's when it's not concentric or eccentric, so your muscle's not moving, it's staying, staying still. Uh, isometric would be lifting your leg up. Uh, Anatomic movement occurs when the muscle contracts with movement of the body parts involved. Opposite to that, the isometric movement occurs when the muscle contracts without movements of the body parts involved. Now it's time for Just the Facts of the Day. Just the Facts are brought to you by Jane Clare. For deflection, the agonist is the hamstrings and the antagonist is the quads. For knee extension, it's the complete opposite. The agonist is the quads and the antagonist is the hamstring. For plantar flexion of the ankle, the agonist is the soleus and the gastrocnemius, and the antagonist is the tibialis anterior. For the dorsiflexion of the ankle, the agonist is the tibialis anterior, and the antagonist is the gastrocnemius and the soleus. That's all we have today, folks. Make sure to tune in to catch tomorrow's Just the Facts of the Day. Just the Facts of the Day are brought to you by Jamie Clare. To go along with all this correct information, there are multiple exercises to get enormous calves. However, we have hired two specialists who will identify, demonstrate, and describe two main exercises that will help you build your calves. Now, over to Jamie and Tommy at the gym. Hi, I'm Tommy, and I'm a workout specialist. I've picked two exercises that will help to give you enormous calves. The first exercise I have chosen for you is a standing dumbbell calf raise. Here's a demonstration. In order to complete this calf raise, one must stand on either a box or a stool and go on their tippy toes up and down while holding a designated weight that's appropriate for you. It's important while doing this exercise to not go too far down on the box to avoid pulling a muscle in your calves. It's also extremely important to brace your core to avoid falling. <laughs> <laughs>
Although this exercise is extremely beneficial, there are some safety considerations. You must make sure that you have a spotter if you're not a professional like me. As well, make sure the weight is appropriate so you don't strain any muscles. On top of that, you should also focus on making sure the box will be able to hold your weight and the dumbbell's weight. Just don't worry folks, we'll be right back after this quick commercial break. So, um, what do you do for a living? I lift things up and put them down. Excuse me? I lift things up and put them down. Okay, um, here's the strength circuit. I lift things up and put them down. Over here, uh... I lift things up and put them down. And this is our stretching area. I lift things up. Cool. Exercise number two. Due to the Applebee gym being not compliant to our workout regime, we've had to place in a video here to show you an example of the plate push for the calf muscle. I've got myself situated at a leg press machine, and I'm just going to put my toes up on the plate. I'm always going to keep my handles, uh, my locks locked in position on this particular exercise. So we'll go ahead and push the weight up, keeping my knees slightly bent. I'm going to push the weight all the way up onto my toes and all the way back down, getting a full range of motion. exercise is not for beginners as it is extremely dangerous. You have to make sure that you're using the appropriate weight because this, e this exercise could cause injury or even death. It's important that you're doing an extensive warm-up before you do this exercise. This should not be the first exercise you're completing. You must not only warm up your legs but also your core as your core is extremely important to maintain the weight of We'll now head over to Jamie at the fitness center where she'll talk to us about isotonic versus isometric exercises. An example of an isometric movement is a calf raise hold. This is where one would go on their tippy toes into a calf raise and hold for a designated period of time. Here's an example. The dumbbell calf raises, as previously shown, is a great example of an isotonic exercise as Tommy is in constant movement while contracting his calf muscles. That's all we have today on TJ37. Make sure to tune in tomorrow to hear about why the dining hall has a negative impact on our overall health. TJ37 is brought to you by... No gym intimidation, no lunks, just $10 a month. We're not a gym, we're Planet Fitness.